Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not supposed to be in the frame yet. Oh, oh sorry. Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is our second uh, talk of the afternoon on, on Sunday at Almost Heaven Star Party 2019. Um, our speaker this afternoon is Skip um, Bird. Bird. Oh, I'm not wearing my thing today. A longtime friend who's been at many oh, sure, slander parties me. and always has something interesting to talk about. He has arranged for us to have a transit of Mercury this year. Um, he's not doing so well on the weather, but it'll be clear for that event. Oh, of course. Of course or of course, of course. It, it, does it have a rain date this year for the uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So 2212 or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And um, so uh, Skip is going to talk about the transit of Mercury, but he never talks about just one thing. So he, he's a, a solar system ambassador and a raconteur about many things and an educator in astronomy. So we, we love to have him talk to the adults as well as the kids. And he's ready to go on now because I'm taking his time. So please welcome Skip Bird. There we go. There, now you, can now you get the picture. are closed. You should have lots and lots of audiences. Again, it's November 11th, so we take our chances. It could be raining. It could be snowing. It could be nice and clear. Let's hope it's nice and clear. I'm showing, going to show you today how what's going on with it. We're going to take a look at some of the toolkits that the Night Sky Network supplies uh, on shadows and silhouettes, which will help us with transits. And then we're going to go outside because I never like to sit in here and talk and let you guys stare at me. So we're going to go outside and we're actually going to go on a short trip to see why when you're looking at a transit of Mercury, why you cannot see it without a telescope. Okay. Main reason is this is how big Mercury is. That little dot. Okay. If you saw that big yellow sun on the side of the tent out there, the green and white striped tent, this is the scale of this planet to that sun, which happens to be our sun. And we're going to see how far away this is from the planet or from the star and how far away we are. And if you get really lucky and ambitious, you want to, I have placed a scale model walk all the way out to Saturn, headed out the road out of here. So as you drive out, you see little squares everywhere. Hopefully the balls are still attached to them after the wind and stuff, you don't know. And you'll notice, you, unfortunately, you can't see sun from several of them. But you can get all the way up to Mars series, I think, before we lose the sun on the view of the side of the tent. But we're going to go out and take a look at actually how big it is and why you got to do it that way. Okay? So that's kind of what's going on there. All right. So the first thing, how or what is a transit? Who knows what a transit is? It's not the big tall thing on wooden legs that you put look your eyeball through. So I want the real. Say, so that's what you're going to answer. All right. Uh, no hands went up. They all went up and came back. Yes, sir. What's a transit? I believe it's when Mercury will pass in front of the sun. Okay. Mercury, yeah. Do we have transits of other things? Okay, enter to the Earth. What would you call an exoplanet going in front of their star? Would that be a transit? Sure. Okay, great, great. All right, so here you go. Here, you get one of these too. All right, sorry, that's the sun pizza. Yeah, a transit, anything that goes in front of something else, which doesn't cause a... Uh, uh, you can get all confused with occultation and eclipses and stuff like that. Technically, eclipse is a transit, and occultation is a transit. They're all kind of the same thing, more or less. They just... They're getting picky with the words. So basically, a transit of Mercury is when the sun's going to go between our view of the sun. It's going to go in there somewhere along the way. I have a picture here of a 2000 and... What was this one? Ha, there you go. That, 2006? All right. Look, whoa, look, look, what's, up? what's that? That's an amoeba. No, actually, this is a microscope. No, that is a sunspot. That is the transit of Mercury at that time. Oh, exposure, you know, several pictures going across there and everything. More sunspots. Woo! Promises, promises. Not like, this time. Not like this time. Yep, yep. But we do have a sunspot growing for tomorrow if we're lucky. Okay. So that's what the transit will look like. That is through a telescope. 
It's not like the transit of Venus. Anybody see the transit of Venus? Okay, those of you who didn't see it, you're out of luck, man. Unless you live to be 130, 40, 50 years old, you ain't going to see it. Transit of Mercury happens about 13 times every century. 2006, 2016, maybe, something like that. There, there's one about every two to three years. Unfortunately, the next one, I think, is in what? China, the other side of the world. We're in the middle of the night. I don't remember exactly. So it happens whether you're ready for it or not. So uh, if we're lucky, it's on our side of the planet, which it is. The one you just saw and the one I'm going to show you some more pictures of happened in Maryland or this part of the world at sunset for us. Everybody else in the rest of the U.S. got to see the whole thing. Last about six hours. That's the whole thing. We only got to see about, what, 20 minutes of it? Sunrise, sunrise, yep, yep, something like that. So by the time we got to see it, it was going off the edge, okay? Because it's not easy to do. One of the things in our toolkit is how to make an eclipse. Who wants to be a volunteer? Let's see, let's see. Anybody got their hands up? Any hands, any hands, any hands anywhere? I don't see any hands out there. Oh, there's a pair of hands. Come on up here. All right. Your job is to put the shadow of this ball on that ball. No, that's not the shadow. That's the words. Here, let me see if I can help you out here. Let's see if I can get you some uh, better picture there. Here, maybe you can do it that way. Now you got something. Oh, we're getting close. All right. Not easy, is it? No. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here. You're going to get the, since you got all my other stickers, you're going to get the little wristband. This is from the International Society of Explosive Engineers. If you're wearing this, you're allowed to blow up stuff. <laughs> okay. All right. So make sure you wear that at all times. All right. As he was finding out, it's pretty difficult. What he didn't notice was that the shadows of the two planets are up here. Okay. So if I move them around... And suddenly you look there, notice the shadow of the, of the smaller one appears on the bigger one. Right? This is how we'd make an eclipse. Right? Whether it be a lunar or a solar eclipse, you go this way. That's the solar. And this one here where it goes in behind there, goes in the shadow. That is a lunar eclipse. But now we're going to pretend this is the sun. This is Mercury. And you guys are going to be the Earth. Okay? All right? You notice this folds like this? I don't know why they did it, but it's very difficult to use. So get a real yardstick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point at you while you're playing with your phone. <laughs> I'm also a teacher, so <laughs> electronic device off, all right? So, and what you're going to try and do is, or what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to swing this by here, and you're going to see if these two line up. See how these two line up? All right? See if they line up. Did they line up? Nope. All right, let's try it again. Did they line up? Nope, okay. That's why only 13 times a century does this happen. It happens at, what is it, March and November, whatever six months apart are, are the parts, and it will come by, and then it will line up like that, okay? Right. So some of you will see it, some of you won't. It's too low, too high, things along those lines. Also, the fact is that our planet we're on has a tendency to do what? Rotate. 24 hours, 1,000 miles an hour. I'm getting dizzy. Sorry. <laughs> right, getting dizzy. All right, and that's because we could be on the daytime. We could be on the night side. We could be somewhere else, all right, when it comes by. If it's daylight and Mercury goes in front of the sun from our view, we will see it. That's the good thing about it. If it's not cloudy, rainy, you're at work, you're busy playing on your phone and not paying attention for six hours because that's about how long it lasts. You're in at work and they're going, I'm sorry, you can't go outside and look. You've got to stay in here and work, 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 work. You know, slash the mechanic weight for no one. All right, so you can do that. It's really nice because of that. It all happens that way because the, the mercury, the transits, I'm sorry, the transits come out. And we can do it this way too. All right, there, I can get my sign there. I got it, I got it like that. You can, will, will it work? Will it work? Let me get my arm out of the way. Hey, it does. All right, all right. So that, you know what that is? That is a, no, that is a, uh, solar eclipse on Neptune, I mean on Uranus, because it spins this way. So there's the North Pole and there's, the, there's an eclipse. See, so it doesn't matter where you go, it's just got to be able to see that there. 
Now, I mentioned earlier that if it could be a transit from another planet around another star going in front of it. We find a lot of those things. The Kepler mission was basically geared on that. Tests. Who's got a test sticker? Anybody got a test sticker on them? Nope. Oh, here we go. Tests. Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. Tess. My daughter's name is Tess, so that's a good one. I gave her a whole bunch of these. Okay. <laughs> Discovering new Earths and super Earths in the solar neighborhood. So what they're looking at is all the stars in our neighborhood to try and see if they can get one coming by. There's two ways to detect planets around other stars, and one of them is the transit method, where it goes in front of the star. The other one is the wobble method. It's going to be hard to see here, but this is our A star. All stars rotate. All right. As it rotates, it does this. Okay. And if you're looking at it this way or looking at it your way, you don't see anything, right? It just looks like it rotates. But unfortunately, when you put a planet in there, it has mass, and a star wobbles. Okay? Wobble, wobble, wobble. These are called wobble balls. All right? They wobble. And we're able to pick that up as known as a what kind of shift? Doppler. Doppler. Raise your hands if you want a prize. Yes, sir? Doppler, Doppler shift. All right, here you go. <laughs> Doppler shift. Here you go. You get a test sticker. All right, yep, see, I'm a teacher. You don't get credit for calling out. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, call the wobble method using the Doppler shift. I have a Doppler shift song. I should have played it, but I didn't. All right, so we'll play it later. And that's how we look at it. Now, the bigger the planet, the closer it is. That's why the first one of the first, I won't call the pulsar ones. I don't count them. But one of the first planets we found was what we call the super Jupiter, or Jupiter-sized planet orbiting its star about every three days. Big mass right here causes a big wobble. Okay, and one of the uh, acapella science video ones also talks about wobbling. He, you know, he talks about exoplanets and stuff. It's really cool. All right. So that's that comes in your kit also, your your uh, transit and shadows and transit kits. Okay, there's a lot of stuff up here. I'm going to go through some of it, but a lot of them just let you come up here. We got craters. We got anything. This is all. This came in this little bag. I don't know how they got that yardstick in there, but they did. Okay, uh, how do you make your transit again? Who wants to be the local transit authority? All right, good job, good job, okay. They've got a bunch of stuff in here. And it also looks like I forgot to take the candle out and it melted. All right, all right, so let's see here. Let's open it up and see what we got. All right, here you go. Will you hold this? Okay, oh, cool. Will you hold, will you hold this? Okay, okay. Here, will you hold this? Where's your other arm? Can't hold, got to all be in separate hands. They all got to be in separate hands. Okay, all right. Here, you want to hold this? All right. Here you go. You want to hold this? There you go. All right, there's my local transit authority. All right, put them all back in the bag and return it. <laughs> all right. So, that, again, those are a variety of things you get in the kits to talk about them. And they've got some other things in there. It tells you how to use each of these things. There's a DVD, CD, which goes through it all, explaining all that stuff. We already did the, the transit one because I just did it here with the yardstick. Uh, I, all I consume with, I've never even read it to find out what the candle's for. Sorry. Okay. I do know what the, the colored glass, the, the, the film is for. Okay. The film is for. Anybody ever look? Oh. Where'd y'all go? Oh, there you are. What color is our star? I still don't see any hands. <laughs> yes, sir. Yellow. Yellow. Hey, congratulations. You get a test sticker. All right. Good job. Good job. Yellow. So when I look through this at everything, I got a sunspot here, by the way, too. All right. I look at this and everything, and everything looks kind of normal. But are all stars yellow? Are they? No, all right, congratulations. Here, you get a Sophia sticker. All right, no, some of them might be blue. Look through the blue at the different colors. All right, I happen to be blue there. Is that blue over there? Okay. You can look at it. Different. I got some different ones we use. It's called Seeing Through Alien Eyes, where we actually take a look at trees and birds and other things and colored pieces of felt. And guess what? They don't look the same. They look completely different, okay? So that's one of the things you can do with this because you're trying to talk about stuff that somebody can see. Who looked at, uh, Arlen showed us the other day, Alpha, uh, Lyra, something or other? T -Lira. T Lyra, yep. And why is that unusual? Yes, sir. Did anybody else see T Lyra? 
It's really red. Here you go. Why is it red? Why is it red? Was out in the sun too long? Did it get sunburned? No? No? Uh, was, it, uh, was it red because it's a communist? No, no. Uh, let's see. Uh, why was it red? Carbon yeah. I, I didn't call on you. You yelled out again. Back there in the back. He raised his hand. Carbon star. All right, here. You got a test sticker. Duck everybody in the front. Okay. All right. Carbon star. All right. And what does that mean? It means it's made out of carbon? No, that means that just happens to be the outer layer of its shell that we can see mostly. So, okay. So it's a carbon star. Now, this in here is moon's faces and eclipses. It's got a bunch of different things there, too. And somebody says, hey, can you see through, can you watch the transit with our safe solar eclipse filter? We call them sunspotter glasses because eclipses only come around once in a while. Can you see it? No. Why? I don't see a hand. Come on, people. How, yes, sir. It's because it's too small. It's because it's too small. All right. Now, this has got corners, so be careful. Oh, ah. Oh, wait, I get to show you a picture. Oh. Ah, don't, don't spoil my fun. <laughs> don't jump ahead. You read the, you read the synopsis. Up. Yep. Yeah, you cannot see. It's not big enough to see. And when, like I said, when we go outside, you'll see that. And I, I don't have to tell people like this. That don't put this in. You can put it in front of your binoculars if they're like 3 by 12s. Okay. They might fit here. Anything else is going to be too big to do that. And I have a picture of one of these. It went all melted. So that could be your eyeball just as quick. Okay. All right. This is the outreach toolkit I was talking about. In the back, DVDs, CDs, things along those lines. Tell you all about it. If you, how many of you belong to an astronomy club? Great, 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 great. All right. How many of you, uh, many of the people that belong to this astronomy club have done an outreach event? As in, had your telescope out in the front yard, showed your neighbor, went somewhere to a park. Uh, somebody asked what you're doing, so I'm looking at the moon with my binoculars, okay, all right. You've all done outreach. You all qualify for one of these toolkits. Your astronomy club qualifies for a toolkit. If your astronomy club doesn't have one, go beat up somebody. I don't know who, you know. Uh, you need some help with that, sir? Well, I can wait. Okay. <laughs> I know, sometimes stickers are really tough. All right. But yeah, you can get them from them. We get, we're actually now on our third round of of uh, eclipses or of, uh, excuse me, toolkits because we have so many people doing outreach, okay? Uh, we got three or four sets of this. We got three or four sets of that. Uh, this young lady here is one of our outreach coordinators here, or one of our outreach people. She does a couple of programs during the summertime. Has a really good time doing it. One of the other ones that which comes in the scale, uh, actually exploring the solar system is an actual scale model. All right. Here's some scale models. Again, notice I've only got Uranus, Neptune, some weird planet, Pluto, all right? And when you start on your drive, you'll notice that you only go to Saturn. Saturn's about six-tenths of a mile from here, a little over a, a kilometer away, all right? And I got tired of walking, so I stopped, I stopped at Saturn and went back. Uh, at this example, Pluto is two and a half miles away, 2.6 miles away, something like that, okay? Pluto is not much better, bigger than the head of a pin. Again, this is all related to the size of that sun out there, that one meter sun. And this is one of the few models where the scale and distance are the same. Right? Most of your pictures, most of your models, you know, stuff like this. Okay. This is not the same scale. They're not the same scale. All right. Because is Saturn smaller than Uranus and Neptune? Nope, no. nope. But they had to wedge it in there so they could get the rings in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. You sure? It's, hold on, hold on. I, mean, uh, I don't know. I, every time I see a picture, it looks just like this. Okay. So it might be, you know, it might be in there that way. All right. The other thing about it is it's going to be a publicized event. It's not like the transit of Venus where it only happens every 100 years or so, you know, whatever it happens to be. But it is something that is unusual enough that people are already starting to talk about it. Uh, had the libraries contact me and said, hey, we'd like for you guys to come out and do something with the transit of Mercury. Great. I tell them, when is it? That was all they, they said, when is it? They'd heard about it. So I go back and say, it's November 11th from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. They go, oh, that's Veterans Day. We're closed. 
So what does that mean? You're closed, but that doesn't, well, is there a rain date? You know, something like that. No, no. We'll get to put them on there. So we're going to get with them and get permission to do it outside the libraries, even though they are closed that day. Okay, so that's something you can do. It's a good way to get outreach. It's a good way to get people like him, like that young man there, or this young lady right here, or that young lady right there, or even that young lady back there. Get them involved in astronomy. When you look around the room, you see a bunch of old gray guys, don't you? Are we getting younger? No? Okay. No, we're not. Nope. Every day. In fact, I just had a birthday not too long ago, so I, I checked to see if it went the other way, but it didn't. I figured I'm going to start counting backwards now until I get back to zero, and then I'll you know, start over again a second time, see if that works. But no, we're not getting younger, so we need younger people. This is all, you know me, I'm the outreach guy. Okay? I'm the outreach. I'm trying to get everybody involved in outreach so that we're, when we go away, when Terry finally retires, okay, all right, that there'll be somebody younger to take over for him. Hopefully somebody younger will take over for me. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Getting old and tired. Ah, how many were at my uh, Sky Tour on Friday night? Ooh, look at that. Okay. All right. Remember something I called the triangle, the summer triangle? Guess what? Part of the toolkit is the trip around the summer triangle. Okay. Talks about the constellation. Gives you a little sheet to, hand, to go have people walk around to different telescopes and check off different things, you know. So you don't got the same baby, well, we're all looking at Jupiter, we're all looking at this. No, you got one looking at this one, you got one looking at that one, you got one looking at another one, so they can wander around. Of course, the guy running the telescope is really bored because he's looking at the same thing all night, but he's got a purpose in life, and that's it. So you <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. But you can, so you can do that. So it's a trip around the triangle. You make copies of these things, you know, do that type of stuff. Uh, we talked about why don't eclipses happen every month. This one is really cool. You put it on a little clear disc. And it lines up, and it shows you that they're not at the same angle, which I showed you with the ruler, which is a little bit easier, okay? And another one, shadows in space. Ah, question. If I put my hand up here like this, right? So I'll go back over here. If I put my hand up here, where's my shadow? Let's see a hand. Yes, sir. Maybe it's on the screen. No, it's not. Watch, watch, watch this. Is there light on my hand? Is there? Watch, 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 watch. <gasps> Look at that. So it's not on the screen. It's also right here. It's also right here. It's also right here. It's also right here. And guess what? That's why we have night. But don't tell anybody. Because we're in the shadow of the earth. It's a secret. The flat earth people think we turn the light bulbs off. <laughs> right? I've been going, well, if it's, how can we have night if it's flat? Hmm. How can our shadow on the planet up there... On the moon, be round. I can't ever, I've never been able to figure out, well, this is flat. How can I make this round? Even without corners. Okay. I was, oh, I could cut it in a circle. It'd still be flat and that'd make a round one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do I get at nighttime? Oh, excuse me. There. <laughs> so what are these guys doing? Are they on the other side too? Is there somebody over here? Can I drill through to the other side? Okay. No, you get, again, you got some of those things. All right, real quick, another one is, oh, look at you there. See that? See that picture? That is the, the transit of Mercury was at sunset. Okay, is that sun? That was sunrise? Okay, sunrise, thank you. She was there, that's her television. Hers is the one that works. Okay, that's hers. Mine's this big one here that didn't work that day. Yep, yep, she's, 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 <laughs> Tells me all the time about her four inch being better than the six inch. All right. So this is people just driving by. Saw the telescopes. What are you doing? We're looking at a transit of Mercury. They got to sit there and look through it. Those are the days when I had hair and no beard. So it went from up here down to here. Okay. And in here too. All right. But that's it. So that's what that was. So I'm going to show you another picture of that. These are just quick pictures. Oop. All right. Okay. There you go. There's the big brother, little brother. We just found an overlook that had a good view to the east. Slap the old Westminster Astronomical s banner on the side of the van. Have banner, will travel. Okay. That's, that's three quarters of our outreach is that. Pull up in a van, pull out a telescope, throw up a banner, throw out a donation bucket, and uh, we do pretty good. Okay. And we talk about different people. 
Oh, those are the days of my pink sunglasses, too, by the way. After a decade, they finally went away. I finally left, lost them all. There's the picture we all saw. You see Mercury anywhere up there? Right. It is actually way over right in there somewhere. Okay? <laughs> somewhere in there. That was, that was almost how good it got that day. All right? Oh, there's one of my relatives. All right? Yes, I'm talking about you. All right? There it is. All right, it is, can you see it way over here? There's actually a little dent right about there. You see that? That's it. That's all we saw. Right. Now, nah, actually, we saw a little bit more. Now, can you see the dent? Can you see the little ball? Right there? See the little ball right there? Yeah, you can't. Okay? That's one of the difficulties of the transit of Mercury. That's why people aren't going to be able to go out like they could with Venus, put on the eclipse glasses, and see it. Okay? They're going to need a telescope. That's where you guys come in. Solar filtered, solar projection, pinholes. Pinholes won't work because you can't get a long enough focal length to make that dot big enough to be seen. So it will not work that way. Uh, it's about 50. You need about a magnification of 50. You might... Again, depending on how steady you can hold your binoculars and stuff, uh, 30, 40, something like that. It's not, it's one, what is it, 162nd or, or 324. It gives you the number of how big it is. It's one 324th the size of the sun. Sunspots, will, if they're on there, will probably be bigger that you can see with a telescope than Mercury can. This, but it's going to go mostly or almost across the middle. So we're going to get a nice six-hour view of it so it'll, for monthly I don't know what the exact times are you can look up for your area All right. there now you can see it a little better no those are sunspots November 11th right there see a little bit dot just off the edge and these are earlier in the day that was going that way as the sun was coming up so we were losing the transit as it came on as the sun came up okay November 11th I think it's like 7 32 a.m. to 1.58 p.m. or something like that. Right. And there is this young lady three years ago on the uh, May 16th. Okay? So let's come out of there. All right. Now one of the things... Oh, you all read my comic, right? Sorry, I didn't get to read it. Just if people sat outside and looked at the stars each night, I bet they live a life a lot differently. Well, how so? When you look in infinity, you realize there are more important things in life than what people do all day. Wait, we spend our day looking at the rocks in the creek. I mean other people. All right, so when you're out here, you look up, you see the Milky Way, you see all this stuff, and you go, wow, a lot of people don't actually get to see this. A lot of people are going to miss the transit of Mercury. It's not going to be as publicized and advertised as the uh, eclipse was or the transit of Venus, but it's going to be one of those. Uh, so in here, right, we got the nice, oh, look, there's a possible sunspot. Possible, possible geomagnetic storm. Sorry, it's a side view. Okay, right, but we're going to go over here. Here's the Night Sky Network website. Go here, nightskynetwork.jpl.nasa.gov. It's real easy, Night Sky Network. Oh, look, the Summer Triangle. Funny, I've heard that before. You put in your zip code here, wherever you are in the U.S., and it'll tell you what astronomy clubs are having what anywhere within 100 miles. So you go on vacation, tell them, put in your zip code, wherever you're at. You got friends somewhere, tell them, put in their zip code. They can go out and see all of this stuff, okay? And again, it talks about the outreach resources and stuff along those lines. I'm not going to impress you with the fact that we're number two in outreach because we do our paperwork and Novak doesn't, <laughs> okay? <laughs> You've all seen the little commercial or the little kid sitting on the toilet. No job is done until the paperwork's in. Okay. All right. Mercury Transit. There you go. They also got a thing on there, which they weren't quite ready for me when I asked them if it was ready. And they said it be the next day and said, yeah, here it is. That is what happens to the glasses when you put them behind the binoculars. Burnt right through there. Your eyeball is right behind there, too. Okay. Again, what not to do, what not to do. They give you all this stuff. They give you all kinds of things to do with it. They'll give you why eclipses happen, which we just talked about. Okay. And here's one thing that you guys can do. 
You can print out some certificates, put your club logo right in here, okay? And you can write in their name by pencil or pen or fancy marker and give these out to people who come and saw it, okay? I have people that I was visiting the other day and they still got the transit of Venus one that I gave them. Amazing. He was six, seven at that point. So you can do all that. And then the last one. Some of you say, well, I don't have a solar telescope. I don't have a solar filter. Well, here is how to build a sun funnel. Okay? Made out of oil filler caps, uh, mylar or projection screen, an old metal eyepiece, you know, the one that's been wrapped around the bottom of your box used as a paperweight for however long it is, a Kellner or whatever it's called. I think that was Kellner. Two or three eyepiece. Shows you how to run through it. Great thing about it is it projects it onto there. There's the transit right there. Okay. See that little dot? You see that little dot right there? How many of you see that dot? Yeah, that's why you will need a telescope. Okay. Right, so it projects on there. Uh, I use a real cheap... Uh, Sears refractor for this, for my projection. You got to remember one thing. Keep it centered because if you don't, it melts the plastic baffles on the inside of your telescope. So you'll start smelling plastic burning and then you look through the front and you'll notice there's little holes <laughs> in, the in the baffles inside. So be careful with that, please. Right. But it goes through the whole thing. It's hose clamps, an eyepiece, piece of plastic. It runs through the whole thing, all 64 pages of it. See, there you go. A couple of things you need, tools you need. Yeah. Put it on this one here, okay? I like the fact that they use the Explorer Scientific, okay? There you go. See, they've got it on the Newtonian. You can put it on any Basically, if you use the Newtonian, use an aperture mask to stop you down. Ah, here we go. Here's an apo. Yeah, that's what I'm going to point at the sun without a filter on the end, okay? All right, so again, that goes through everything on how to do it. Sun funnel. I've got one of these. It's really cool. Works really well, Okay? All right, now I said we weren't going to be, this wasn't going to be very long. We're not going to be inside very long. So what we're going to do is we're going to stand up. Everybody's going to stand up. I'm going to go out that door. We're going to wave bye to the camera as we go. And we're going to go out and we're going to actually look at a transit of Mercury and get a little bit better example of why it's going to be so difficult to see. All right, everybody stand up. Thank you much. I had to raise my hand. Thank you, Scout. You're welcome. <laughs>